It all began here, in darkness, stuck in our brokenness, wandering, directionless, in need of a grace we knew nothing about. It's not much of a beginning, but this is where we were. Fast forward to a starry night in Bethlehem. You see, while we were lost in darkness, God was consumed by love. A love which led him to do the unimaginable. A love which would cost him his son. That night, the heart of Christmas began beating with a rhythm that would change the world. Jesus, the Son of God, our Savior, was born. Grace in a manger, love in the flesh, Hope had overcome hopelessness. Mercy had triumphed over brokenness. And love had overpowered the darkness. Today, we celebrate that moment. We worship our Messiah. And we stand in awe of the life-changing gift God has given us. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, the true heart of Christmas. Well, good morning. It's good to be able to welcome you this morning on this uh, Christmas day. Uh, welcome to the Carly Redemption Church. It's good that uh, you can be with us this morning. And uh, we're here to, to worship the Saviour and to celebrate Christmas together. And we're going to do that uh, by singing our first carol, Angels from the Round of Glory. <laughs> Thank you. 
spend a few moments just remembering uh, our, our Lord Jesus this morning. We're going to uh, begin and uh, we're just going to pray uh, to start. But let's just turn our, our thoughts to him and let's pray. Our Lord, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you this morning that we have the freedom and the opportunity, Lord, to come together and to meet in this way, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Christmas time. We thank you that it's such a precious and special uh, time of year. We thank you that it's a, a great occasion. Lord. We uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, we have this uh, opportunity to celebrate it, Father. Lord, we, we mark this occasion because it means so much to us as uh, Christians. Lord. We thank you for that gift of Christmas, that very first Christmas when the Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth, Lord. We thank you that uh, he would humble himself and put on flesh, Lord, and become uh, a small babe in a manger. Lord, we thank you that uh, your uh, plan of salvation would begin uh, and would start with Jesus. We thank you that we have a Messiah, one we can now call Saviour of the world one who has dealt with our sin and our shame as he went to the cross at Calvary. Father, we thank you for that this morning. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to remember that amidst all the, the presents and the, the carols and the food. Lord, <clears throat> Lord, we remember this gift of Jesus that has been given to each one of us. Father, help us to understand it, to appreciate it, and to accept it. <coughs> We ask, Lord, uh, this day that we would that we'd pray and remember those people who are less fortunate than us. Lord, we have so much. You've blessed us with so much. And we pray for the people who haven't got so much, Lord. Maybe people who haven't got uh, much family this year. People who are struggling with uh, to put food on the table, Lord. Uh, or, or even just shelter. Lord, we bring them to you and ask that you, you bless them and keep them this day, Father that it would be a time where they'd be able to celebrate and remember you always. So Lord, we pray that all these things this morning would be glorified to you, would please you, be a sweet one, in praise of your name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing our second carol, uh, which will be on the uh, stand to sing. Oh. 
children like to come to the front. We're a little bit short on children, aren't we? <laughs> Joe, you're too afraid to come to the front, or would they like to? I've got presents. Oh, if that happens, I've got presents. <laughs> so we've got Jonah. Hello. Take a seat. Well, I decided to speak to children very briefly. I think obviously a lot of us be at other people's family, or maybe still playing their toys, who knows? But I thought I would just uh, speak to you very, very quickly. And I wonder, have you, uh, sorry, how did you like the chocolate? Have you ever eaten chocolate? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like chocolate too. There's two of us. There's a lot of people in this room really like chocolate. I wonder if you've even eaten chocolate today. Put your hand up. Come on. People, people in the seats as well. Who's eating chocolate already today? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone brave to admit it? Oh, I'm surprised. Well done. Well, some of us may have eaten chocolate already. I had a little bit of that. I'm chocolate this morning. And we do enjoy chocolate. It's really nice. And the one thing I like about chocolate, well, there's one chocolate I particularly like. I've got a favourite. Do you have a favourite chocolate you like? Or do you like it all? Maybe not too fussed or, or worried. But some people like, have a favourite chocolate. And I think I've kept this company in, the, in, in business because I've eaten so much of this chocolate and I seem to still be buying it or I get it as a present. And I really, really enjoy it. And we talk about chocolate. Do you like chocolate? I like chocolate too. It's great. Chocolate is great. Now, my favorite chocolate is very, very healthy because it's in the name, okay? And that is chocolate orange. Chocolate orange. And this is my healthy chocolate, okay? I'm afraid it's not that healthy, but I try to uh, convince myself that it is. And I enjoy a chocolate orange. And generally, I do have a Christmas stocking. It will be stuff that I can consume, like chocolate and sweets. And very often I will have a chocolate orange. I enjoy chocolate orange. Have you ever eaten chocolate orange? I've not, not had it. Well, you're already surprised today. So you're yeah, you're going to have to try it today, I think. So here's my chocolate orange, but also it helps us to remind us of <coughs> Jesus. Okay? So you've got to remember this. Let's open it up, shall we? Yeah. So we take the label off. Okay. First of all, we've got this nice <coughs> wrapping here. You see inside, it's silver. Do you see that? It's silver. Yeah. And this can help us to remind us about Jesus. Jesus came as a king. He came, he came for, to be king for everyone. And when we think of kings, we think of sparkly things, don't we? Crowns, maybe, jewels. And we've got silver here in the wrapping. 
This will help us to remind us that Jesus came as a king. And in the Bible, it says, the angel says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For all the people. Now, do you know what shape this is? I'm just going to put the wrap back on in a minute. So we're going to tell to it. What shape? Okay. It's a circle, yeah, but we could call it a globe, okay? A globe, all right? Like the world. The world is, you ever seen a map of the world on a little globe like this? You can spin it around and you can see all the different countries, can't we? And so this, this chocolate orange can help us remind us of the world. This message that the angel said, was good news. It was a good news. Oh, God, no, no, no. <laughs> it was good news. And this good news is for everyone, the whole world, the whole world, that Jesus has been born to us. Now, this is a tough thing. I've got to try and break it now. It's quite hard. It's quite tough. So we see. Yeah. Oh, we can. Look, we break it now. Can you see what's happened? It's in bits. It's in bits or segments. Okay, you see that? All the bits, bits of chocolate there. Okay, and again, it can help us to remember something because when the angels spoke to the shepherds, the shepherds they went down to the stable. They went to see baby Jesus. And then afterwards, they didn't just, they then decided that they wanted to share the good news with everyone. Everyone. And some, I'm not very good at this part, and I know I mean, can testify to it, but I, sometimes I share my chocolate orange, and I have to share it, okay? There's bits here, and, we, and it's good to share. So it can help us remind us to share the good news of Jesus and the good news of the Christmas story. Because he's very special to us. He came as a baby <coughs> on that very first Christmas at Bethlehem. And he is the saviour of the world. And that is the good news for us. Now, does anyone want to try my chocolate? <laughs> you want to try my chocolate? Go on, have a, have a piece. Have a piece. Have a piece. All right. Okay. Right. Now, a little present for you. But you've got to keep this in the box until you get home. And remember, I share my chocolates. You might share it with your mum and dad. Yeah. You share it with your mum and dad. Would you like to take that? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Would you like to take it? Does your sister? Do you want to take one of your sister? There you go. Thank you for listening. You can go up to your seats. <laughs> There's some older children, maybe I might have a chocolate orange for them as well. If they come and sing at the end. We'll get that singer, that sound singer, another carol together. And, uh, and then afterwards, I'll just do a little talk. Yes. 
to be eaten. But uh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to bring it back to football just for a minute. It is the beautiful game, of course, so I, I can talk about it. But uh, we've enjoyed a lovely World Cup, a winter's World Cup, haven't we? And, uh, and I noticed that uh, when we were kind of, uh, when we were getting excited about the game, England versus France, big quarter final, and, uh, and one of the football pundits uh, said, think back to 2016, English international football was at, was at its lowest ebb, and we needed a saviour. And they were getting all a little bit excited because they were referring to Gareth Southgate. And, uh, and you also remember that uh, well-known uh, quote from Bill Shank, don't you? The Liverpool manager, many, many years ago, he said, some people think football is a matter of life and death. I don't like that attitude. I can assure them it's much more serious than that. <laughs> we'll come back to that. But uh, this morning, I, we wanna, I just want to spend a few moments in Isaiah chapter 9, verse uh, 6. And we've got a, a birth announcement here. And, uh, and so often we, we send a, a birth announcement or a little card to say a child has been born. And it's normally done after the child has been born. A lot of like nowadays it's, it's kind of done on social media, and that seems to be the thing that's that's done. And uh, uh, I, I remember doing one for Joel many, many years ago. I did a, I designed a little card to send to everyone. You know, these these vital statistics of, of weight and the, the exact time that he was born, and even the length of the baby as well. But uh, and also you you remember that uh, Angel Gabriel. Uh, announced the birth of Jesus to Mary, even before she hadn't uh, conceived. Uh, but going right, right back, here in Isaiah, 
we have an announcement, Isaiah predicting 700 years before the birth of Jesus that there was to be a saviour born. For us, a child is born. To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And we're just going to have a, uh, a brief think about uh, these, these names, these names, these aspects, these uh, the aspects and character of Jesus. You may have heard this before, but uh, Christmas comes but once a year, and when it does, it brings good cheer. And it does, doesn't it? It's quite special at uh, Christmas Day. It can fill our hearts with joy. Some of us enjoy the, the build-up so much more to Christmas than others. I'm not so keen on it, but Christmas Day, Christmas Day is, is a special day. It's a lovely occasion where we can do something very different and uh, remember Jesus, to celebrate with family and friends and to uh, enjoy one another's company. But I'm conscious that Christmas can be a difficult, difficult time also. The loss of loved ones, health problems, tense family relationships. And I think we're all aware that there is the rise of the cost of living nowadays as well. Even the, uh, the big supermarkets, where they, <coughs> they spend millions of pounds on their adverts, don't they, their Christmas adverts. People are <coughs> a little bit more sensitive this year. They kind of scaled it back a little bit. Not so much of the kind of huge dining room table laden with food, and the table kind of creaking under the weight of a, a huge turkey and trimmings. No, they've got a little bit, uh, a bit more sensitive this year. And so when sorrows, sorrows come, when difficulties arise, we need a wonderful counsellor to guide us. A wonderful counsellor to guide us. There is no counsellor like Jesus. His words guide us. We only need to pick up our Bibles and we can read about that. You may have noticed when Jesus was alive, he also was someone who uh, quoted scripture. A wonderful counsellor. And he had great wisdom. And I think you'll notice that he'll have the qualifications to help and to guide the human race. After all, he did design us. He lived amongst <coughs> us and he knows us. And we may have uh, trials and difficulties in our lives, but sometimes these trials and difficulties can shape us. They can help us to be more like Jesus. And we have the privilege and blessing of the Holy Spirit uh, if we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. Sometimes we sing, Lord of mercy, you have heard my cry <coughs> through the storm of your people, my song in the night. We also have a mighty warrior to defend us. Quite often, many of our battles can be with ourselves, our hearts. Maybe we uh, struggle with many uh, insecurities and we wrestle with our hearts a little bit, feel a bit uh, uh, unrest. And uh, that's, that happens to all of us at times. We can find things very difficult. And uh, probably because our behavior, our natural behavior is to, to kind of go against God, isn't it? Is to rebel against him. But we have a mighty warrior, someone who is more powerful than our sins, Someone who can deliver us, protect us. We are, no matter how big the sin, Jesus delivers us from our sin. Now I was thinking about this, another song came to mind. What love can remember, no wrongs we have done. On this suit, all knowing, he counts not their son. Thrown into the sea with our bottom or shore, our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. What riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment. His life was the cost. We stood neath a debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. We find in the Bible that he will remember our sins no more. This is a great comfort to us this morning. He is more powerful than anything. He has the power to deal with our sin and our shame. 
And Jesus wraps us in his righteousness and believe and trust in Jesus. Jesus is our mighty warrior who protects and defends us. He's an everlasting father to comfort us. Now the first two, you might not feel too close to the counsellor and a, a mighty warrior, but a father, hopefully you'll, you'll notice here that there's a, there's a closeness, there's a, an intimate relationship. A father tenderly cares for us. He shows love to his children and a father who sees our needs as well. And so we have this aspect of Jesus where he is able to come alongside us and to tenderly support and love us. And hopefully we've uh, all experienced that with our earthly fathers. Some people may have uh, slightly uh, not great memories, unfortunately, of their fathers. But this morning we can know that we have an everlasting father that sees us, sees our pains, our troubles, our needs, and he understands us, and he has great compassion for us. Moving quickly on to uh, number four, and the fourth is a, a heavenly prince to give us peace. A heavenly prince to give us peace. I wonder whether you believe that this morning. Peace, where? Is there peace? You kind of, if, I'm sure you've pictured in your head at some point over Christmas when you've read the Christmas story or, or heard it, uh, read it out, the, the, the multitudes of angels lighting up the sky, praising God and telling the shepherds of the great news of Jesus that he was born. But even if we cast our eyes over the last year, there has been a few difficulties, a lot of sorrow and pain. For instance, <coughs> instead of the multitudes of angels, we can think of the multitudes of the, the Russian tanks that have been invading uh, Ukraine. We can think of death that's happened in school shootings. And we can think of the many millions of people worldwide that have had to flee their, their homes because of war this year. But this is why Jesus came. This is why Jesus left the glory and splendor of heaven. That's why Jesus, the Son of God, put on flesh and humbled himself to the most degrading death, death upon a cross. It was for the sin of the world. It was for all our wrongdoings. And we might say that this world is at its lowest ebb when we see the news. We look at the news and there's much distress and sorrow. But if you believe and trust in Lord Jesus Christ, he is our saviour. He is the saviour of the world. He is taking care of our past, our present and future sins. He has dealt with them all. And as we thought to you earlier, he's dealt with them all and he remembers them no more. And in you are at peace with God. And that's what we celebrate. That is the joy that we have this Christmas. That we can have uh, comfort in knowing that we have peace with God. He is dealt with sin and shame. And remember this, he is with you. He is Emmanuel. After all, he is there to guide you as a wonderful counsellor, to defend you like a mighty warrior, to comfort you as uh, like an everlasting father, and gives us peace, peace with God this day. What a wonderful gospel, what a powerful gospel we have in Jesus that brings us hope and it brings us peace this morning. I'm just going to uh, read part of the carol and then we're going to sing that as we uh, close. I said it would be short enough. Go on. <laughs> and our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. 
that uh, for that child so dear and gentle is our, is our Lord of heaven above. And he leads his children on to the place where he is gone. Not in that lonely, sta lonely stable where the oxen standing by. We see him but in heaven, set at God's right hand on high. When, like stars, his children crowned, all in white, shall wait around. Let's sing uh, once more in the city. <coughs> Uh, there'll be a little bit of chocolate. So, 
That's correct. Who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, <laughs> being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we've been able to consider you. We thank you for the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he came to this earth. Lord, we realise it was um, something that was so precious to you that you would, um, you would give him up for us. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have for us. Lord, we thank you that you're so merciful towards us. And we thank you that Jesus, who had no sin in his own, went to the cross for our sins. Lord, that is such a, a wonderful gift. A great gift to know that we have the hope of heaven if we believe that this morning. That we can call you Saviour and Lord and know that we'll one day be with you in heaven. We praise you for this gift. We thank you that we can have peace with you. And we praise you for that wonderful fact. Lord, we ask and pray that you'll bless this time, this Christmas time to us. We pray that it will be full of joy and happiness and that we would appreciate you more and more what you've done for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.